Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we can continue to have a look at the severe thunderstorm risk we do have today. We've had a lot of thunderstorms over the last three or four days, mainly focused further northwards, westwards and southwest England. But for today's thunderstorms it's mainly in that East Anglia through southeast England down across the south coast into the London area as well. We've got a big amber weather warning issued for this for these severe storms and we are seeing them really break out at the moment. Perhaps the most intense storms we have seen all week coming this afternoon into the evening. We're going to see frequent flashes of lightning, a lot of hail, and the main risk from these storms is going to be the rainfall. They are moving very slowly um, westwards and southwards, sort of pivoting where you see this main band of precipitation. That is the occluded front, and it's slowly pivoting on that. Some of these areas in that London area down into Kent, across the south coast, could see up to 100 millimetres of rain. So that's four inches of rain, and there is likely to be some flash flooding risks with this. We'll have a look at the lightning for this as well. We'll go through the weather warning, of course, the amber, amber warning and a widespread yellow warning. We'll run through various short range models to see how it could develop over the course of this afternoon and evening. And then we'll have a look at the uh, UKV, looking at the precipitation temperature over the next five days. And then we'll finish up with the GFS and then we'll have a look at the GFS and the East Indef ensembles for the mid to longer ranges. We are going into a more unsettled spell, not really a thundery spell, but more of an unsettled westerly flow. So, do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in description. So you can see at the moment, these big thunderstorms breaking out at the moment. They really are bubbling up very, very quickly. Suspe suspect by the time you're watching this, um, probably releasing this in the next sort of hour or so, the radar will have changed quite dramatically and we'll see a lot more precipitation. As they only really have bubbled up within the last hour or so. So I'm, I'm expecting it to continue to get very severe. And I do suspect areas near this occluded front are going to be seeing some significant rainfall and along these uh, southern coasts where we've got these stationary cells and this small slither of thunderstorms here through London into parts of Essex up towards Cambridge potentially there. That is going to be very slowly moving westwards and I do think it's going to expand and give a lot of rain in a short period of time. Frequent lightning strikes along this at the moment. Further northwards and westwards... It is a lot drier at the moment, but we do have a sneaky little weather front that is starting to approach from the west, and that is the new sort of systems we're going to be seeing, more of an unsettled westerly spell as we do break down that high pressure that has been dominating the past week or two, and we go into a, an unsettled jet stream developing a sort of pattern. But we are still hanging on to the warmth and the thunderstorms in the far southeast. You can see very, very severe coming up over the next few hours. And even if I do run it back an hour or so to about 3.45, you can see very little activity. And this all this activity has popped up in the past hour. And that's why it's by the time you're watching this video, it's likely to be even more severe than it is right now. Now, if you put on those temperatures, you can see it is still warm in some areas, perhaps still into the London area, the far southeast, because, of course, it's the warmth, the hot air mass that is still fueling these storms, even though it is cooling down. And also up towards the Liverpool area, near St. Helens, up towards Formby, Southport, these areas, again, pretty warm um, uh, there. And down in towards Exeter, Torquay, still some warmth there. It's getting towards the mid-20s. But elsewhere, you can see more yellows and lighter oranges, and that is January temperatures in around the average this time of year. Some areas even perhaps slightly below average as we do go into a more westerly phase. Now, if we do go to the Met Office website and have a look at the latest on the lightning strikes. Now, you can see every single one of these orange strikes is where we have an active thunderstorm cell. Now, I must emphasize, I have said at the start of the video, the main risk from these storms is the flooding, the rainfall, the flash flooding risk with that. But, of course, still lightning risk. You can see a lot of active storms along the occluded front that's stretching to parts of northern France and into the southeast of England. We've got quite an active storm nearly the Isle of Wight and active that active line of storms stretching from Guildford through central London up towards um, sort of the northeast of London, through Hendon, up towards Harlow and Bishop Stortford. This line here is of intense storms, and we are seeing cells along it producing a lot of lightning. 
Now, you must remember that these uh, that lightning detectors don't always pick up every single lightning strike. They do pick up quite a few, but some uh, cloud to cloud lightning strikes. Some of the sheet lightning doesn't always get picked up. So there's always going to be more activity than this is showing, but it is a very good indicator where the most active storms are at the moment, the ones with the most development and the heaviest rain. Because, uh, of course, lightning you do normally get the heaviest precipitation with that uh, because of the way lightning is developed through the static um, friction or static electricity developing within the clouds from the friction between hail and rain up in the atmosphere so where we do have this uh, most frequent lightning that is probably where we have got the heaviest rain at the moment because when you get into these sort of thunderstorms where the rainfall rates are in in completely off the charts almost the radar doesn't always distinguish between very heavy rain and torrential rain so if you are looking for the most intense thunderstorms do go over to the lightning detector and you'll be able to see where we've got active cells at the moment uh, and this is probably the highest activity we've had this so far this week and I continue to see more activity over the course this afternoon and the evening now if you have a look at the weather warnings we've got a widespread yellow warning stretching most of east anglia through south east southeast england most of the south coast down to parts of the southwest but we have had a look at that thunderstorm warning over the last few days but we have got an amber warning that is from 11 a.m this morning until 10 p.m tonight i do think the peak of these storms is going to be around that 4 5 6 p.m mark after that, I do think they will fade away um, with their lightning activity dropping, the torrential rain dropping, but still heavy rain around. So there's still a lot of energy. But I do think the peak of these storms will be around that 4 to 6 p.m. point. And that's why I'm trying to get this video out uh, around 4 p.m. before that happens. So if you look at the further details, you can see heavy showers and thunderstorms are expected to break out today, leading to some flooding and disruption. Some places will miss these, but where they do occur, 30 to 50 millimeters of rain could be could fall in less than an hour. And a few places may see in excess of a 100 millimeters in a few hours where storms are slow moving lightning and hail will be additional ha hazards showers and storms will slowly die out in the evening again high likelihood and high impact but again the emphasis is on the rainfall that is the biggest thing with these storms so please do take care yes this rain can fall very very quickly so it might not look too bad at, at the moment it might look completely bone dry on the ground but five or ten minutes of torrential rain we can start to see flash flooding occurring just because the ground is so hard at the moment so please do take care and keep an eye on the radar to see where those storms are at the moment so if you go over to the wrf and start on the cape charts you can see that cape in the far southeast corner very very strong along the south coast as well and that's why we're seeing that intense storm activity in the southeast quadrant now let's continue over this afternoon but around 6 7 p.m you see the cape starts to sort of dissipate away and that's why i do think the storm activity will start to reduce still maybe along the far south coast but definitely further inland towards the london area essex up towards cambridgeshire that those storms at the moment those will start to die out around 6 7 p.m before the activity diminishes by around midnight and it does go much less uh, stormy and we can see very little cape activity beyond that so if you look at the precipitation Raw precipitation, you can see nothing at 11 a.m., but you can see the thunderstorms developing the far southeast around 1, 2 p.m. as I'm recording this. You see they just pop off, and you see an absolute brick there of very, very heavy, intense rainfall. Again, it's very dis difficult to distinguish for the models where exactly the precipitation will come off, but you can see along that south southern uh, southern coastal areas up towards the london area up towards east anglia as well intense thunderstorms taking off and those will continue through the afternoon before fading back towards the coast as i said around 6 7 8 p.m so that's why i say inland towards the london area north of london i do think the storms will peak around that 3 4 5 p.m mark maybe into 6 p.m still some heavy rain around but the storm development will reduce i do think now beyond that we do go drier before eventually precipitation does move in from the west if you go to the Arpege and compare that, again, very similar cape amount, so you can see very intense cape, and very interesting, you see this slither of cape going through London, and that is what we're seeing on the live radar with those thunderstorms, so the Arpege really picking up on cape here quite well, and that is why we are seeing those that line of thundery activity through London, as I said, you saw that line on the lightning radar um, through Guildford, through London, up towards Bishop Storff, that line of storms there, definitely is being helped by this intense cape and that is why we're seeing those line of storms but you can see it's still high cape around it so storms can develop anywhere but that's why we're seeing that line of storms at the moment and that continues to move westwards before degrading around 4 5 p.m before eventually that storm activity reduces around 8 
at 8, 10, at 8, 9, 10 p.m. it does reduce to almost nothing. But there'll still be probably be some precipitation around, just nowhere near as much. So do you look at the precipitation charts, you can see that precipitation does develop. And you can see I'm recording this around 3 p.m. You can see at 4 p.m. you can see the intense showers and storms along the south coast, but also that line of storms going through London area. So our page is doing very, very well here with what we're seeing on the live radar and, of course, with the lightning detector as well. Very, very good there from the Arpege, forecasting these storms very well. And you can see they do move slowly southwards and westwards, but you can see they do, uh, they are very stationary from around 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. They are slowly moving westwards, but the main area of precipitation is not going to move too much. And that is why the flash flooding is going to be the issue. Because once these thunderstorm cells start getting parked on top of you, and they can, and they only very slowly move, they can dump, as I said, 50 to 100 millimetres of rain in a very short period of time. Because in these reds you saw on the radar, those rainfall rates are getting up towards 50 millimetres an hour. You get that for an hour, and then some residual rain as well. That's when you start to get to these very, very high totals. Now, those thunderstorms will eventually fade away later this evening before we go back into a westerly flow. So if you go to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation temperature, it's showing over the next five days. And you can see those thunderstorms developing in the southeast and it works at 3 p.m. again, concentrating towards the London area, not quite getting the overall precipitation too well here from the UKV, but definitely forecasting those thunderstorms extremely well. So yes, yeah, severe thunderstorms coming in the southeast corner, as we saw on the live radar, and eventually the UKV has them slowly petering out over the course of this evening. And you see around 6, 7 p.m. this evening, those thunderstorms are very much reducing in activity. So UKV really fading them out very, very quickly. Um, so, yeah, very interesting from the UKV. Maybe it is underdoing it a little bit because those precipitation charts at around 3 p.m. were slightly underdone. And, of course, the Arpege and WRF have it lasting much further into the evening, fading from the far south coast around 9, 10 p.m. So perhaps the UKV is a little bit pessimistic here. Definitely what we're seeing on the live radar is that the Arpege is definitely looking like the most likely um, short-range computer model or the best-modelled best, well, best modeled one um, today. So beyond that, we do see precipitation is pushing in from the west. That is a weather front. Finally, some actual widespread precipitation, light, light to moderate precipitation, that is, moving in from the west. It continues to do so over the coming hours. And we do see eventually some more showers in the southeast tomorrow. But weather fronts just pushing through, giving us soaking for quite a few areas. And even into the south, and the southeast could see some rain, moderate rain from this to really soak the ground. Again, it's going to be quite saturated off these thunderstorms today, but we still need more rain to saturate the ground even more and try to make up for those drought conditions we have had recently. Beyond that, we do see some very heavy rain potentially in the southeast for the early hours of Friday, and we just go into more of a westerly flow with repeated bouts of weather fronts there. You can see a bit of a school line there, so that's a cold front sweeping in, and just a general westerly pattern with a lot of heavy rain, which for all the water companies, gardeners out there, and people who do want this hosepipe vans for many areas to disappear, this is a great sign that this widespread rainfall will be filling up reservoirs, filling up rivers, and generally saturating the ground. And the reason why we're seeing that is because you look at the upper air temperatures, we are pushing in a westerly flow, temporarily a warmer air mass, but it is within a low pressure system. You can see it there. Not a deep low, but still a low pressure system nonetheless, bringing in weather fronts and widespread precipitation. So if you do look at the two meter temperatures, you see nothing too drastic over the next couple of days. You can see those temperatures peaking in a few areas around that high teens, maybe low 20s, around 24 degrees could be seen in London, and we're actually seeing high, slightly higher temperatures, I think, in Exeter, down towards 21, 22, and Liverpool, even though it's not showing here, it looks like likely it's in those low 20s to maybe mid 20s at the moment. Beyond that, through to tomorrow's temperatures, slightly warmer, as we do have less thunderstorm activity around, and less precipitation in general, so 25, 26 pot is possible, so mid 20s, so pretty decent, and as we head towards Friday, you can see those temperatures once again into the low to mid 20s, generally around average this time of year for many areas. And similarly into Saturday for cooler areas sweeping in, you can see that slither of green and blues there, that's along the cold front, that heavier precipitation bringing those temperatures down, so warm ahead of it. You see 23, 24 in East Anglia, but behind it much cooler, and by Sunday, 
that cooler air is start, starting to push in, still warm in the east, still around or slightly above average. So it does look like in the southeast and east Anglia and generally central England, it still could be very warm over the next five days. Nothing cold, but nothing really hot. Back down to the low to mid-20s. The temperature, I think a lot of people would agree, is much more pleasant and it does look like we will see some sunshine over the next five days. We will see some precipitation and cloud, but also some sunshine. So it'll mean it is pretty pleasant indeed. So if you do finish the video, we'll have a look at the GFS and then we'll have a look at the ensembles as well. So you can see that low pressure system just to our south, that's producing the intense thunderstorms today, mixed in with the hot air, before we eventually go more westly. Low pressure approaching in from the Atlantic, giving heavier precipitation, weather fronts, and just a generally jet stream um, um, powered sort of systems. They move moving in continually over the next 10 days before eventually high pressure could build in around day 10 and it could turn warmer, hotter, potentially. Again, no insane air masses from this GFS run, but it would be turning much drier and this sort of unsettled spell we have at the moment and we're heading into more unsettled weather. It does look likely it will very much be quite temporary and it does look quite probable the last week of August could be drier and maybe warmer once again. Wouldn't say a heat wave at this stage because those warm air masses, at least in the GFS run, don't look exceptional, but could be widely back into the mid to high 20s with temperatures well above average for many areas. Now, if you compare that to the ensembles for London, you can see warm still at the moment, turning cooler over the next few days with that westerly flow and then generally turning above average in the longer term. And for the last week of August, definitely a trend of low precipitation, but nothing too low at this stage, nothing bone dry and generally above average upper air temperatures. So whenever we see the sunshine come out, whenever it is dry, those temperatures will rise to around, um, uh, well, probably well above average, actually mid to high 20s is very, very possible. Precipitation though, over the next week does look uh, quite plentiful, especially in the north and west, but not exclusively, quite a few little rainfall events there for the southeast as well. So I do expect the southeast to see quite a bit of rain over the next week or so. Nothing crazy, just probably an average sort of rainfall, but it's a lot better than what we have had recently. So if you finished the video, but just have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, look at the midnight run. Again, very similar quite above average at the moment, turning cooler than average towards the end of this week, and then turning much above average for the last week of August, with those upper air temperatures in the low teens. So again, could produce temperatures in the mid to high 20s, maybe even touching on 30 degrees with some of these warmer ensemble runs, but still quite a bit of precipitation around, even in the mid to longer term as well. So I am expecting um, there still to be quite a few showers and storms potentially around with those warmer upper air temperatures. Even though that GFS run did have high pressure building back in, it looks like the majority of these ECMWF ensembles Yes, have warmer air masses, but still have low pressure close by, so still showers and rain in general will be around. So yeah, severe thunderstorms around at the moment. It will be dying down over the next few days with more of a westerly flow, just generally moderate rainfall pushing in from the west. Some areas in the south and east will still have some great weather, still mid-twenties and sunshine, but... If you are out there today, make sure you stay safe because it does look like there is going to be intense thunderstorms continuing through this evening, especially towards London and the south coast and into parts of Kent as well. So please do stay safe. There is an amber warning in force and do keep an eye on the radar if you are out there today as that is the best indicator to know when those storms are coming. This is sort of the worst sort of weather to be looking at weather apps because the weather apps are ch chopping and changing every 15 minutes when they get updated. So please do. Do look at the radar if you want to know if the storm or general heavy precipitation is on its way, as that is the best way to know if rain or thunder activity is imminent. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.